Hi, we're Alex and Desiree. Hello. And welcome to this little segment we call Bachata Musicality. Musicality. Yes. What are you listening to? What's going on with Bachata music? What are those instruments? What are those sections? So. And also, why is it important to understand a little bit more about the music? It's because the music is there first, and that's what we dance to. So yeah. the more you understand about what's going on in the music, the better it will be and easier for you to interpret the music. Absolutely. Uh, decide what, uh, how you're stepping. Uh, how you're moving, with what intention. So all of those things matter, right? The timing, yeah. the uh, energy behind the movements. Mm -hmm. So in bachata, to start off, we'll name the five basic instruments that so, every bachatero should know. Yeah, five main instruments. You have three guitars. You have the requinto, which is the primary guitar, the lead guitar. Uh, most notably, that's the, the guitar that you'll hear most often with the melody. Right? You have the segunda, the secondary rhythm guitar. You have the bass, the bajo. And then you have the two other instruments, the guida, that's kind of like the cheese grater kind of instrument, and then the bongo. That's right. And the bongo is an instrument that we really use. A lot of us kind of naturally hear the bongo timing to really identify and establish the 4-4 four, four, um, time signature in the music. So bachata, even though as dancers we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, from a musician standpoint, the music is just four, four. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Four beats per measure. So what we're going to do now is we're going to show you some examples of uh, the, the, how uh, prominent the instruments are. Some songs, uh, it's a little bit more difficult to hear the instruments because they're all layered together. Um, but we will show you kind of your favorite uh, Dominican bachata songs so that you can understand where the, um, first we'll start off with the requinto. So just listen. So the first layer, uh, and this is a skill set, right? To be able to fine tune uh, with your ears what you're listening to. The most obvious beat that you hear is the that is the requinto, that's the lead guitar. And it's always, it played differently depending on the song, but in terms of a more traditional sounding, classic sounding bachata, you will identify the requinto because in a lot of Dominican style bachatas, it's kind of how the music introduces itself. The, the requinto is very, very prominent. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, like in El Verde de Tus Ojos by Kiko Rodriguez. So those are, are actually the ones that we connect to a lot when we're uh, listening to Dominican style bachata. Now, the bongo, the guida is also a uh, kind of clear instrument that you could hear. You do have to pay a little bit more attention. So now what we're going to do is just kind of uh, listen very closely. The guida will have uh, constant ticks, especially in the beginning during a uh, rhythm section that we call the, the derecho. derecho. Which, right. by the way, uh, let's talk to them about the three different uh, rhythm sections. So there's bachata. three different rhythm sections in bachata, and it's important to note each instrument has a different role to play or a different sound in each rhythm section. So the three different rhythm sections are the derecho, the mahao, and the mambo, right? Three different rhythm sections. And not all the time can you kind of identify them as the verse, chorus, the bridge, kind of, so to speak. But roughly, uh, you can kind of associate them in those musical chunks like that. Mm -hmm. um, the derecho, like Alex said, uh, or like I was just saying, every instrument plays uh, something different in each rhythm section. But first, most notably, at least for me, it's easier to identify the derecho by the guida because it has an obvious change. <clears throat> and that's, it goes from tick, 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 into the mahao, which it slows down, kind of lifting the energy a little bit to tick, 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 tick. That's right. So the energy rises in the music, it elevates. Mm -hmm. And usually the mahao is found, mahao, which by the way means to smash or to smush. Uh, it's usually found in the chorus. The derecho typically in the verse, um, and again, the mahao in the chorus. So we're going to listen to a song called Ya No Te Olvidaré by Richie Ortega. And I want you to pay close attention. We're going to actually maybe go clap it out or with our laps where the derecho is. Again, you're looking for kind of a metallic sound in the music. So mm -hmm. here we go. <laughs> the 
Again, it's difficult to, to, to hear sometimes when the song is a little faster, and it's also really, really even more um, noticeable when you are actually hearing live music. Absolutely. Um, a lot it's... of the bachatas that we listen to, which is also an important note, kind of the way we distinguish in terms of the styles of Dominican bachata or more modern sounding bachata is that the synthesization that happens within the music. So um, these are produced in studios. There's a lot of great technology out yes. there. Uh, you have now AI that's producing Oh my God, music not the you. AI. <laughs> but going back to, to the guida, right? I love it. And the third rhythm section is the mambo, right? The the mambo is the kind of, well, we identify, it's not the mahao and it's not the derecho, right? But it's a, the, the extreme lift of the, uh, of the song, right? The highest point in the song. And quite oftentimes people are like, oh, especially in more of a Dominican traditional bachata song, they're like, is this merengue, right? Because the music is lifting so much. And the guida just can go off, right? It can start playing and, and grooving in its own way. Um, and it's really, really a high point of the song. Let's take an example of the mambo section. Um, again, like Desiree said, each instrument plays a specific role or plays a specific pattern uh, within each rhythm section. So when, again, the, uh, the segunda, the rhythm guitar, it will be really, really hard to show you with uh, just a regular song because it is really hard to hear. The bajo is kind of the same in all the songs. Boom, ba, boom, 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 boom. But the rhythm uh, guitar is definitely harder because it's layered between the bajo and the requinta, which is a ding, 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 mm -hmm. and the other instruments. But what we can show you, though, is an example of the mambo section, the heightened um, energy part of the song. Uh, this song is called Ajena by Frank Reyes, and actually, to even help you more with the instrumentation, uh, it's a live version. So let's see if we can find the mambo section here. <laughs> It's so good, it's so good, bachata. So if you're watching this video, you probably love bachata just as much as us. We love bachata and sharing our passion with others. And guess what? There's other people just like you and me Online, this community is amazing. We learn from each other, enjoy amazing bachata from the comfort of our own homes at the Dance Club. So we hope you join our team today, link below. In bachata, we have also the influence, in terms of the music, it's influenced by three <coughs> other genres of music, uh, bolero, mm -hmm. son, and merengue. And in this particular song, you really see the influence of merengue because it almost gets so high in energy that you begin saying, to yeah. kind of just really sit into those hips and really rock with the music. But again, knowing, noting that each rhythm section has the five instruments playing their specific patterns. Um, how is that, again, just bringing it back, tying it back to the mm -hmm. dancing? When, go ahead. No, I, I was just gonna say that here, uh, it's important to understand the, like the lifts and the feels of the music. Um, and that would correspond to how we're dancing, right? Yep, and <clears throat> it's really important to note that because we're dancing to the music, we always want to match that intensity or that energy, right? Because some bachatas are more flowy, drifty, mm -hmm. right? The instrumentation is not so pronounced or uh, so heavy. Um, and so we want to reflect that in our dancing and not just with our feet, but also in our lead and our follow, right? We don't want to dance rough or hard or anything like that. If the song that is going more... Um, fluid, more continuous. But even if the song is really spirited and you're really feeling that, that punch in the music, don't punch anybody in the face. Don't punch anybody in the face. But you still, when we dance at least, there's still a controlled aspect to our movements, right? And I think for, for people who might not be, uh, who haven't come to know Dominican bachata 
on their first, like the first part of their bachata journey. Like if you started with maybe other styles of dance and you're trying to figure out how to match the music in more of a bachata classica way, I would invite for you to turn up the, the basic movements that you already know and find more body movement in your, your movements. Um, maybe adding different uh, textures in the hip, maybe different energies in the, the, the cadence of the steps that you're using. Because the music is, especially in this style of music, is not flat at all. So for you to dance flat the entire time, what does flat mean? With the same energy, right? You don't want to start <clears throat> the, the dance off at 100 because then you have nowhere to go, right? You don't want to start dancing the whole song at this level and you just maintain the same thing because the music changes. We, we know that we have the three different rhythm sections, the mahao, the derecho, the mambo, right? So the, the cadence and then the, the nuances in the dance, the energy that you are transmitting through your frame to your partner should definitely change. Also, we also describe kind of two worlds of dancing, the street world and the Afro-Latin dance studio world, ballroom world, whatever you want mm -hmm. to call it. And so it is, it is really important to note that the music doesn't change. The same songs that we're, we're using are, are played everywhere, all over the world, especially now, thanks to UNESCO, who declared bachata intangible heritage, mm -hmm. we can enjoy awesome bachatas, even when we're in very foreign countries, very far countries like China or South Korea. And so what one thing is important to note is that because we dance this differently in different parts of the world, it's important to know, get a, a really good musical ear to understand, for example, not just the, the instruments, but also get uh, in tune with your timing. Yes. In our kind of Afro-Latin dance studio world, we tend to dance uh, at the top of the beat. So we begin initiating our steps on one. Um, or accenting the one, two, three, five, six, seven, where in other parts of the world, it is very socially acceptable to dance on different timings. So if you're used to stepping on one with your left leg, maybe in other parts of the world, you'll see people will start stepping on two or on three or on four. Which is um, okay. Which it's is okay. okay. But it is really important for you to identify where that is so that you can easily adapt and adjust to other dancers. The whole point of dancing, social dancing, is connecting with your partner, right? And connecting with the music. And so if you're connected with your partner and you're connected with the music, who's to say what is really right or wrong, right? It's all about what feels good and what looks good for you. So um, the, the other point that I was going to say is about context, right? Some moves, <clears throat> there's two options here, right? You could hear, you, you could try to hit something right on the nose. What do I mean by that? If the song goes bum, 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 maybe you use your flair, parabure, right? Maybe you use out, cha, cha, cha. But maybe you didn't want to hit it in that way and you kind of wanted to leave some kind of negative space there. Out and oh, uh, I, I don't know. But it, it's either twofold. It's like you wanted to hit that or you didn't want to hit that. If you know what you want to do, right? But sometimes when we dance, um, I'm just speaking now, honestly, when we dance or when I dance with a partner and they're interjecting other styles or forms of dance in the, the dance that don't match the energy, uh, they're interjecting new moves that don't match the energy of the song, then it just kind of just doesn't feel as good, right? They're trying to hit music, but it's, the energy is not matching. So I think that's one way that you can definitely, uh, come back to the dance is by maintaining like the feel of the music. Thank you so much for joining us. That was it for Bachata Musicality. Just a brief introduction into the music, a little bit more about interpreting the music. We hope you enjoyed this uh, little segment and we will see you next time. Bachateros. Dímelo. Dímelo.